So this first lesson is called Organized Counting here. And this idea of, uh, of counting things is what we're going to be covering over the first uh, two or three units of this course. Basically, what we're interested here is if we have something occurring, how many possibilities are there for the outcomes of this thing? So we're going to look at ways in, in this lesson of how we find and keep track of all of the possible outcomes of a series of events and how do we count how many outcomes are possible. And this idea of counting the possibilities is what we're going to pick up on in the next few lessons. So the first way of organizing our counting is to use what's known as a tree diagram. So here's an example. We've got a sock drawer that contains 10 pairs of socks in three colors, white, black, and red. List all the possible outcomes if two socks are drawn at random. So this is an easy thing to do with a tree diagram here. We do our diagram in stages. We think about if we're drawing two socks, what are the possibilities for the first sock that we draw out? Well, there are three possibilities. It could be white, it could be black, or it could be red. So we'll just list those like that. Now, when we draw out the second sock, there are three possibilities for the second one as well. And we draw these branches coming off of our original three choices. The second one could be white, black, red, white, black, that should connect up to the other line there, white, black, red, and for our red one first, white, black, red. So organizing this in a tree diagram gives us an easy way of seeing the number of possibilities, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm just running down there, and listing all of the possible outcomes here. So we can, we'll denote all of the possible um, outcomes that we can get here using this set notation that we're going to use. So the set of all possible outcomes is, well, we can have white, white, we can have white, black, we can have white, red, then we can have black, white, um, black and black, I shouldn't have a comment there. I should just have a B and a B. Black and black. Black and red. Then red and white. Red and blue. And finally, red and red. So we have commas there between the elements of our set, and we're just indicating each possible outcome using uh, two letters there. Now another way of answering questions of this type is to use what is known as the fundamental or the multiplicative counting principle. And I've taken the definition here just straight out of your learning guide. So if a task or a process is made up of stages, like pulling our socks out, where we had two stages, the first sock and the second sock, with separate choices, the total number of choices or the total number of possible outcomes is m times n times p, where these letters m, n, and p just represent the number of choices at each stage. M is the number of choices for the first stage. N is the number of choices for the second stage. P is the number of choices for the third stage, and so on and so on. So for our socks, the number of possible outcomes was, let's see, we had three choices in the first stage, three choices in the second stage, so a total of nine choices, just like we saw in our tree diagram. So let's look at another example here. A six-sided die is rolled and a coin is flipped. How many possible outcomes are there? Well, we can go back to our, our set notation. We can say, let's use A, or the set A, be the set of outcomes for our first stage, which is our die. And we'll let B be the set of outcomes for our second stage, which is our coin. Now, what are the outcomes here? Well, rolling our die, we have six possible outcomes. We can get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. For our coin, we have two possibilities that we can list out here. We can get a head 
or we can get a tail. Okay? So in each of these sets here, with the curly brackets, I've listed all of the possible outcomes. We are interested, if we're going to use the counting principle, in the number of outcomes. So we want the number of things in set A and the number of things in set B. And we use n to represent the number here. So the number of things in A is 6. The number of things in B is 2. So if we're doing both of these things, the number, the total number of things is going to be the number of things in A times the number of things in B by that multiplicative counting principle. So 6 times 2 gives us a total of 12 possibilities. So let's put all of this together and take a look at a sort of a, a, a fairly simple problem that you might be asked to answer. A team plays three games of soccer. In each game, they can win, lose, or tie. List all of the possible outcomes. Well, this would be a good thing to do using a tree diagram. Okay. And we're probably going to need a little bit more space here, so I'm going to uh, extend my page and move this thing way down. So in our tree diagram, we're going to have the first game, we're going to have the second game, and we're going to have the third game. In our first game, what are our possibilities? We can win, we can lose, or we can tie. In the second game, we have the same three possibilities. Win, lose, tie. Win, lose, tie. And win, lose, tie. For the third game, again, we have the same three possibilities. Win, lose, tie. 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 And then win, lose, tie. And notice I'm running out of space here. So these are easier to do if you've got a, like a full sheet of paper devoted to this. So win, lose, tie. Um, win, lose, tie. Win, lose, tie. So there's our tree diagram. And then over at the side here, we can list all of the, uh, the possible outcomes. So we'll just say that E is equal to the set. And down the side here, we'll just list all of our outcomes here. So we, our first one here, if we just follow this along, www is win, win, win. Then we've got win, win, loss, win, win, tie. Next up, we've got win, lose, win. Win, lose, lose. Win, lose, tie. Then win tie, win, win tie, lose, win tie, tie. Jeez. Now we're down to starting with L. So lose, win, win, lose, win, lose, lose, win, tie. Okay, so you get the idea going on and on and on and on. Okay, I won't finish this off. Um, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, we could just count them going down. Uh, let's do this using the fundamental counting principle. Okay. So the number of things are going to be the number for the first game times the number of possibilities for the second game times the number of possibilities for the third game. There are three possibilities in each one of these. So 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 27 possible outcomes. And we could count them from our, uh, from our tree diagram if I wanted to. Now, a few more questions here uh, involving applications of our tree di diagram. How many ways can the team win exactly twice? Well, let's go back and we want to look at all of the pathways through our tree diagram where we get exactly two wins. So we are going to have ones like win, win, 
loss, win, win, tie, gives us two. Um, win, loss, win, gives us two wins and nothing else in there. Win, tie, win, gives us two wins, but nothing else out of that branch. If we lose first, then we've got to go win, win to get two wins. And if we tie first, we need to go win, win to get two wins. So in total, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six ways that they can win exactly twice. So we can just write down six ways. How many ways can the team not win any games? Well, again, let's go back. So these are all of the branches that have no W's in them. So we'll do this in green. So nothing from this first part here because we start off winning the first game. So we've got to come down to the second one. And let's see, lose, lose, lose counts. Lose, lose, tie counts. Lose, lose, lose counts. Oh, sorry. I should, shouldn't do these ones because those are have a, a win for our second game. So we want lose, 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 tie. Lose, tie, lose, lose, tie, tie. And coming down here, tie, nothing in this first branch because we win. So tie, lose, lose, tie, lose, tie. And then tie, tie, lose, tie, tie, tie. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways. How many ways can the team win at least one game? And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use what's known as the indirect method, which is a method that we're going to use over and over again throughout this course. If we are talking about winning at least one game, how many possible wins are there? Well, they can win one game, two games, or they can win three games. If they win any of those three numbers, they've won at least one game. So to do using this set notation, let A be the set of outcomes for winning at least one game. The complement, or every th all of the other possibilities except what we're interested in, okay, is called, we denote the complement by A primed. The complement A primed is the set of outcomes We should say for winning no games. In other words, if they don't win at least one game, then they win no games. Now the number of things in our set A, or the number of ways that they can win at least one game, is going to be all of the possibilities for number of games they can win, minus the set of outcomes where they don't win any games. So we consider what are all of the possible outcomes, then we take, what are all of the possible outcomes here, what are the number of possible outcomes that involve them not winning any games? If we take those ones where they don't win any games away, what we are left with are the ones where they win at least one game. So we know what both of these numbers are. They're a total of 27 possibilities, and we know that there are eight ways that they can win no games. So the number of ways that they can win at least one game is going to be 19.